This is the Barrett Figuring Listing Machine from the 1940s. It has a 10 key keyboard with a repeat switch, a subtotal button, an input clear lever, and an input indicator here with a display of the total. It's got a printing mechanism up here which prints every number you type in when you do the crank. And don't get me started on this weird crank with the giant Bakelite knob. Ooh, I cannot wait to tell you about that crank. The guy whose name is on the machine is Glenn Barrett, born in 1869. Around 1910, he founded the Barrett Adding Machine Company, and by the 1920s, the Barrett Company had become part of the Monotype Company, which made fancy printing machines. Monotype also created their own typefaces, or fonts, which we still use today. Actually, they invented Times New Roman. You know, the choice of font really does have a big effect on how people perceive things. Check out this Times New Roman version. This is the Barrett Figuring Listing Machine from the Totally Different, am I right? Anyway, it works pretty similar to other 10-key printing machines. You type in your number and then pull the crank to add it. Each number you type in gets added to the total and also gets printed. And then to print the total, you crank it twice without typing anything in. Like here's 482 plus 840. As you can see, my printer has seen better days. The ribbon is pretty dry, so it's hard to read the numbers. That's actually easy to replace since it's just a standard typewriter ribbon. But the paper doesn't advance itself. The paper rolls on a rubber cylinder called the platen. The mechanism turns the platen a little bit, which advances the paper. But this rubber is old and dried out, so it's not sticky enough to move the paper. You can see that knob is turning, but the paper is moving. What strikes me immediately about the Barrett is how compact it is. The crank is pretty striking too. It's got this oversized yellow-brown knob on it. It feels great in your hand. Every other machine has a crank that sticks out like this. The big knob is certainly different. Look at those swirly colors. It kind of makes me feel like... Here's the other different thing about the crank. On every other machine of this type, you pull the crank towards you and down to do each addition. On this one, you push it forwards and up. The Barrett people knew how weird this is, so they molded this little reminder right on the case. Start here. At first I thought this was just different for the sake of being different, but when you live with it for a while, you realize that it's a really smart design. See, on a big old machine from the early 1900s, you had to really pull on that crank pretty hard. When you need to use some force, it's easier to pull a crank that's sticking up rather than push a crank that's sticking right towards you. It's just the geometry when you grab it. Up here, your pull is perpendicular to the crank arm, so you get maximum torque with minimum force. It would be an awkward motion to try to push this crank up, especially if you had to apply a lot of force to it. Now, you can't tell by looking, but on the Barrett, the upstroke doesn't do anything inside the machine. The business really happens when you pull the crank down, and you can feel it. You have to pull down a lot harder than you push up. And this is exactly what you want. Like I said, your arm is better positioned to apply force when you're going down rather than up. Why did the Barrett company want a crank that you push up? Well, I got a theory about that, too. If you start your hand on the keyboard, look how much your arm has to move with a pull crank. Up, and down, up, and back down. Now with the Barrett, up and down. I think the choice is obvious. Now given that it's going to be a push crank, actually the weird knob on the end makes a lot of sense. It's a great example of what designers call affordance. Certain things in their design, just in the shape of them, encourage certain types of use. Like a doorknob is round, so you turn it. This thing looks like you should put your fingers around it, so you pull it. This must be something you push, since you couldn't possibly do anything else to it. This thing you can wrap your fingers around and also push the button, so I guess you're supposed to push the button and at the same time pull the whole thing. See, it's a combination of psychology and anatomy that makes people want to use things in a certain way, just based on their shapes. If the object is well designed, you'll be able to use it without ever being instructed. 
Anyway, on a typical adding machine, the handle coming out the side of the crank is something that just wants to be pulled. It's because of the shape. You wrap your fingers around it. Based on where your elbow is in relation to the machine, you want to pull it. On the Barrett, the crank is meant to be pushed, so the appropriate shape is not a handle that you wrap your fingers around, but a thing that fits in the middle of your hand. When you hold on to this thing, you feel like pushing it. It's a perfect design choice for a crank that's meant to be pushed. And look at the crank itself. It sticks straight out at you, but the knob is angled up slightly right at the end. It's as if they're inviting us. See? It's going up. You push it up. Maybe I'm overthinking this thing. Do the people who design the Barrett figuring listing machine really think this much about how the crank should be shaped? Maybe they just randomly stumbled into a design that turned out to work pretty well. What about those colors on the knob? They make me feel. 